So let me talk to you about how to make your race engine last forever. Well, not really forever. Nothing lasts forever, but lasts for a really long time. This is Dai Yoshihara's uh, FD engine. He kind of retired from FD uh, a few years ago, but he still does a lot of demos. And uh, he wanted us to refresh his uh, engine. We build his engines. Now this engine has been through an entire season of Formula Drift Pro 1. Uh, it's also been used for a couple years of demo runs that he does for Yokohama Tire. Um, you know, these demo deals can be almost as bad as a competition. Cars running all day, giving VIPs and stuff and contest winners rides. So it's been through about, I don't know, five or six of those and numerous test days and things like that. So. You know, it's probably almost two seasons of brutal drift use. Now, um, drifting, especially pro drifting, is really hard on engines. Um, you know, back in the day uh, when I was with Falcon, their engine builder of choice, uh, their engines used to last half a season. We'd have to switch them out mid-season to avoid failures, and those engines were really done when we took them apart. So when Dai started to go off on his own, uh, we took over his engine program, and I think he's enjoyed a lot better reliability since then. You know, our engines always last over a season, and uh, you know, this is, you know, we a lot of it's due to our use of uh, cryo treating and WPC. And I just wanted to show you what a difference it makes. Where do I start? Um, Here's this connecting rod. It's a Cali's Ultra Rod, one of the best rods you can get. It's a Timken Clean Steel, um, ARP 625 custom age bolts. Um, a really nice rod. Uh, we cryo and WPC treat it. Uh, you know, um, when I go through and freshen up a motor, a race motor that's been run for a while, like a season, I always change the rod bolts. The rod bolts are the most highly stressed part of the engine and uh, you know while you're in there you might as well change them. It's cheap insurance. So these are brand new bolts. Uh, it didn't need to do it but I just did it uh, and that's what we generally do in our race engine refreshes. Um, with the cryo treating and the WPC uh, we measured the big end. There was no dimensional changes at all. Small end, no dimensional changes at all. Uh, we magnafluxed it to make sure there's no uh, cracks starting. Everything was awesome. The sucker looks brand new. Uh, the crank was uh, cryo treated by CTP Cryogenics, then WPC treated. Now, this is a Cali's Ultra Crank. Same thing, tin can clean steel. This uh, finish, um, that's how it comes from Cali's. The nice, generous radiuses, um, aerodynamically profiled counterweights. Uh, external balance with heavy metal in the counterweights. Um, this is like as good of a crank as you can get just about. Um, we cryo WPC'd it. Um, there is like nowhere. I mean nothing at all. There's some light burnishing of the WPC on the journals and that's it. I mean this thing is like brand new. Uh, we always uh, magnaflux these after you know, when they've been refreshed, just in case to check them out. But uh, this thing is like brand new. Pretty mind-blowing, huh? Now our bearings um, are King XPC. Uh, these are the bearings with the uh, copper uh, nanoparticle coating. And believe it or not, after that much hard use, uh, these bearings look practically brand new. Uh, you know, like we, uh, when we refresh an engine, we change them just because they, they're not that expensive and we're in there. But literally, you do not have to change these. I mean, man, these can go right back in. I mean, the coating is still there and, and the coating is still cherry. That kind of speaks uh, to how good King's nanoparticle uh, coating is and just how, um, you know, everything with the WPC and all that, how it just comes out, how this thing just spins with a smooth WPC journal. I mean, that's pretty mind-boggling too. If you build racing engines, especially Formula Drift engines, uh, it'll blow your mind. Now, 
Uh, we'll go to the camshaft. Uh, this is a custom camshaft that uh, Comp Cams grinds for us. It's uh, easy kinematics, especially for drifting use. It's still a pretty aggressive cam though, but the ramps are kind of mellowed out. So uh, we get more accurate valve motion, you know, like drift cars bang off the rev limiter and uh, clutch kicking and all that, brutal changes in RPM. It's really hard on the valve train but this has been cryoed and WPC'd. There is literally no wear on this sucker. Mechanical roller cam uh, requires pretty, pretty high seat pressures and stiff springs. Maybe the WPC is lightly burnished in some places, but there's literally no wear. Um, you know, that's pretty amazing. I mean, we're used to it, but if you look at stuff from engi other engine builders, um, you know, even if the engine's put together really well, after a year of formula drift, it'll look a lot worse than that. Uh, these are custom JE pistons that are built specially for us. Now these pistons are really amazing. I mean, you look at the skirts. Uh, there's like nowhere on the skirts. The WPC is uh, kind of burnished in some areas, but you can still see all the machining marks clear and sharp as day. And you can kind of see that freshly machine mirror kind of shine it, it, it's still there the ring grooves you can see that the wpc and the ring grooves is lightly burnished but it's still all there um, normally i i say cryotreating doesn't do a whole lot on aluminum uh, but ctp cryogenics has come up with a some secret aluminum cryo that they won't tell me how they do exactly this is a great example of how it works now, it didn't come out of the engine this clean. Uh, we kind of cleaned in the solvent tank and busted up the dome with some Scotch-Brite. But, um, you know, even after scotch brighting, but you could still see the WPC burnishing. Uh, we didn't clean up on the skirts at all. But, man, these things look brand new. And, uh, you know, the uh, pin boss, the bore is uh, really cherry, like almost new. So we're gonna reuse these pistons. Uh, the rings are pretty amazing too. There's no scratching on the rings. You can still see all the nitriding. And you can even see that the naper hook hasn't uh, worn off. So the naper hook is still there. Uh, the end, end gap is still perfect. The, the end gap hasn't opened up. Uh, these rings were cryo and WPC and uh, you know, we could reuse them, but, um, you know, we're in here, so we might as well put some fresh rings. There's nothing wrong with them, though. Um, even I was surprised that the uh, naper hook would still be uh, totally intact like that. And, you know, the naper hook's job is to burnish in real quick for a quick break-in. Uh, so the rings are really nice. Now, the cylinder head, uh, it's an all-pro. Um, this head's been around a really long time, probably seven or eight seasons. Um, a few seasons ago, we had replaced the, uh, the powdered metal uh, valve seats with beryllium. Beryllium is easier on the valves and uh, uh, conducts heat out of the valves better. It's a little bit more malleable and uh, forgiving. Um, you know, it still wears really well. And, uh, you know, if you have a competition engine, especially one on ethanol, um, ethanol is pretty mean on your valve seats. Uh, I think these are the way to go. Drawback is they're, they're poisonous. Um, you know, you don't want to breathe the machining dust or anything, so precautions have to be taken. Um, so these are the beryllium seats, but they've been in there a while. Um, Portflow Design did a... Uh, valve job on their new and CNC valve machine. Uh, the new and job is uh, really good. Uh, cuts a nice 30 degree cut top cut, unshrouds and blends it into the chamber. Nice uh, crisp 45. And then it has a 70 degree throat cut, but it's like a radius um, and it blends smoothly into the port. So it's kind of like pocket porting and a valve job all together. Uh, the new and machine's not like a cutter or stones. It's actually like a CNC machine. So the valves are accelidine, so they're uh, stainless on the intake, um, in canal on the exhaust. Uh, we WPC treated them, so um, the uh, valve stems only have a little bit of burnishing. 
Um, these valves have been in the head for about three seasons and they've been ground of this is the third time around. So you could tell that the margins are getting a little bit on the thin side. So this is probably the last season we, they'll be able to be used. But even to get three seasons on a set of valves, that's pretty outstanding. The keeper grooves have like no wear on them. Nice and sharp, um, no sign of wear. Uh, the valve guide clearances are tight. So they've been WPC'd and cryoed. I don't know what the cryo does on the exhaust valve. It, it gets really hot, so I'm not sure about how cryo and that heated metallurgy is, but hey, I mean, look how long this thing's lasting. Uh, the valve springs, uh, these are comp cam valve springs. Uh, I always change them with every refresh. Uh, springs do get hammered pretty bad, even if you cryo and WPC them. Uh, cryo and WPC helps them last maybe twice as long, but you don't want your valve springs to break, and that's an issue with aggressive roller cams. So that's good assurance to prevent that from happening, but always change your springs with every, every refresh. It should be your standard operating procedure. Some more amazing stuff is the uh, block here. Now this block was cryo-treated and WPC'd. Um, it's just amazing uh, how the bores are. Of course, this thing was machined properly with a torque plate and everything. Uh, so the machining was really good to begin with, but uh, you could still see all the cross hatching. There's, there's literally no ridge where the first ring uh, ends. Uh, there's usually always a ridge on your typical motor, but there's none. I mean, there's like some a little bit of carbon you can scrape off with your nail. Uh, there's no gouging or anything, scuffing, nothing. These bores look brand new. They, they have a little color in them from combustion deposits, but literally they have the sheen of, uh, you know, freshly done. So we're not going to, you know, even stone hone them. We're just going to give it a dingle ball so the new ring seat. Um, we have a process where we have two separate grits of ball hone and a uh, brush hone to kind of do a plateau finish. One kind of gives a little bit of a deeper scratch to hold some oil to keep things lubricated. The other is a little bit of a finer one. And this one knocks the peaks off for low friction and long wear. What numbers these are and what grits is secret. That's our thing. We haven't done anything to the block yet. I, I wanted to show the block just how it is with the engine disassembled so we're going to ball hone it deck it and we're going to check and see if it needs a line board then we're going to do some die penetrate crack testing then we're going to send it i mean literally it doesn't even need stone honing uh, that's how little wear it is so you know if it if it seems like uh, wpc and cryo are expensive um, it saves you money in the long run the other thing it saves is the performance of this engine was really consistent over the season. Uh, typically, you know, the, the ring seal and the valve seal decline and the engine performs less and less well as the season progresses and things wear. But when things don't wear, uh, the engine performance stays up there the whole season. Now, if we like WPC'd it um, only and not cryoed, uh, you know, the performance would be pretty consistent, but you would be seeing some wear and you would need to be replacing uh, pistons and things like that. Uh, you'd see a little bit more wear and everything and the block would probably either, would probably have to be honed about 10 thou over. Now, if you didn't do anything um, at all, just uh, proper machining, uh, you would probably have to replace almost everything that rubs. Uh, you might have to machine the crank journals definitely would have to bore the block and um, you know the bearings and the rings and all that would be uh, pretty worn out and uh, the performance on the engine would have deteriorated probably starting about mid-season and you know, you'd gradually start to lose compression and power uh, from there on and you probably wouldn't get rock solid reliability the engine would be really reliable and easily make a season of use but it wouldn't be like this super cherry, almost no wear situation going on. You know, like I don't like to let an engine go more than a season and a half. Um, I just think 
even if you do everything right, you should st still tear it down and take a look at and see how everything's wearing. Uh, you know, this will give you an idea of how often you should service your engine for, with your use. And it's also always a good idea to look at a real race engine, at least a season and a half of racing. Uh, just, it, it just um, is false economy to stretch it more. I mean, it could be running great after two or three seasons, but if something breaks and puts a window in your block, you know, that's a real expensive thing that could have been caught with some PM. So if you like this content and want to help us out, click our new join button. There's some membership options that you could select and uh, you can have some more privileges. Plus, we greatly appreciate the extra funding. If you don't want to do that, hey man, at least hit subscribe. That hits, helps us out a lot too. So until next time, I'll see you later.